this edition of our third magazine, Chasing the Dream, the magazine, I interview Paul Dunn, who's a mentor and friend of mine, who created an epiphany moment for me way back in 1999, before CBEX Business Solutions started. Paul has received numerous awards for his work. He is the recipient of a Global Lifetime Achievement Award for service to the accounting profession, even though he's very not definitely an accountant. And in fact, I would go as far as saying that when it comes to rating people with um, a global impact on the accounting profession, Paul comes in at a close number two behind the first person that we believe would have impacted accounting being a friar, a Franciscan friar who invented double entry bookkeeping with Leonardo da Vinci way back in 1497. So to be sitting behind someone with that standing, Paul's in a pretty good space. Now, Paul's a senior fellow of one of the world's leading business think tanks, and he is now a fellow of Singapore's Social Innovation Forum, an honour he shares with film star Jet Li and Walmart chairman Rob Walton. Paul is the chairman of the revolutionary B1G1, a global charity that is impacting our world, not only with its charitable works, on the ground, but also through the amazing community it's building with business owners throughout the world. It has been featured in leading publications such as Trend Watching, Springwise, Fast Company, Forbes, and online for the key technology newsletter, Mashable, as well as Voice America. Welcome, Paul. Hey, Chris, that was a, that was a great introduction to, to, be, uh, to be placed number two after Friar Pacioli way back in 1632. That's really, uh, really amazing. So, uh, so thank you for having me. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to, to, uh, to be with you. And by the way, those of you listening in, thrilled to be with you too. Thank you for taking time out. Thanks, Paul. So we're going to get some warm-up questions, Paul, that I'm going to throw at you, just so that people have got a bit of an idea of what makes up <laughs> Paul, not just with the technical talk that we're going to have, but just as the all-round general knowledge questions of what makes up Paul Dunn. Oh, I hope I pass. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answer. That's the beauty. Okay. Paul, first one I've got is, are you a morning, noon or night person? What's your favourite time? Uh, well, I'd love to say all day, but morning is the best one. Excellent. When it comes to steak or meat, rare, medium, rare, or well done? Uh, not at all, because I'm veggie. <laughs> Fantastic. And that's good too. Drink of choice, red or white? Uh, red. And what's the first thing you think of if I say tomato? Joyous. And probably people go, why do you think of joyous? And the answer is because I once got a router and the security code was joyous tomato. And I've always remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> the things you remember. Number five, the last interesting person you met. Uh, well, that would be you, uh, Chris. Uh, <laughs> uh, before that, the most interesting question, the most interesting person I met was actually a cab driver bringing me home on uh, yesterday, actually, from what is called a staycation. And, uh, you know, they often say you can get good things from taxi drivers. And here in Singapore, they're just amazing. And, you know, they were in the front line of the whole thing with, uh, with the pandemic. Yeah. And so it's really interesting yeah. to get their perspectives and, and just, you know, how great they really are. Fantastic. Yeah, that's certainly a wealth of knowledge, too, with all the gossip and things that are going on in the world. Too. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it that way, too. Yeah, but you're right. Leader or follower? Uh, you mean, am I? Do I think of myself as that? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, uh, I, I think of, yeah, I hope leader, but with a different, uh, uh, different twist on it. I think uh, someone once said to me, the, the role of a leader is not to create followers. The role, of, the role of a leader, he should be measured, he or she should be measured by the number of leaders that he or she creates. So, mm. uh, so yeah, that's, that's where I come in on that, yeah. Great point there, yeah, love that. Uh, Superman or Wonder Woman, and I probably know the answer here. Well, I, I, Superman, um, actually, Superman. Superman is the is the one. Really? Thing. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's close, close to International Women's Day, but I've got to say, from a yeah. movie point of view, I prefer the Superman. Yeah. Movie. yeah. Right. I was, thought you might have chosen Wonder Woman because of the wonderful title and acknowledgement that Masami received recently. Well, yeah, I was thinking about that, but when I when when, when you said Superman, you know, I, I I went straight to the movie. The reason I went straight to the movie, by the way, was. 
I saw the most amazing movie on the weekend, right? I had a like a, I had a bit of a holiday on the weekend, and I saw Raya, the new uh, Disney movie. Uh, it's called Raya and the Last Dragon. So my head was in yep. movie space the moment you. Uh, by the way, go see the movie; it's amazing. Yep, yep. And um, yep. so my head was in movie space when you asked that question. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Science or spirituality? Science. Interesting. Now you, you, you took a pause on that. It's like, oh, that's interesting. No, science, definitely yeah. science. Yeah. Um, we've answered this one, vegan or meat. So we know that you're uh, not a meat eater. Chore you most hate doing? Hanging the washing. Believe it or not, I get to do that sometimes. <laughs> I have to message Masami and make sure that she gives you that more regularly then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's always good for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yes, yeah, so I find that uh, if I got something I dislike doing, I try and do it more often, so I then don't hate it as much. <laughs> you, it's, it, there's a trick to that. Well done. There's a very good trick yeah. to that. Well done. What's better, experience or studying? That's a toughie. Uh, that really is a toughie um, because I love studying, but I also love mm -hmm. experiencing. So difficult for me to not stand on the fence on that, except, of course, that, uh, you know, I think, okay, the most important thing for me is moments and moments are when you experience things. There you go. So I guess it would be, I guess based on that, it would be experience. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Sunset or sunrise? Oh, sunrise. Okay. You're an early bird. Mm. Last band or artist you listened to? Uh, that was uh, Seal, actually. Seal was the last artist I listened to. Yep. Childhood or adulthood? Which one do I prefer? Adulthood, actually. Yeah. Okay. That's and because I've spent, I've, spent, I've spent more time there, right? So. <laughs> you probably remember it more too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Childhood's only a distant memory for me now. Um, and a nickname that people don't really recognise you by. They don't recognise me, but, but most people, the nickname, I'm, I'm, I'm called PD, is, is what people mostly yeah. call me. Uh, is that what you meant? So PD is the one. Yeah, yep, yep. Okay, fantastic. So hopefully those of you that are listening have got a bit of a, an insight into the way Paul thinks and ticks. <laughs> so let's get into our interview now, Paul. What has been a dream that you've been chasing your life? Wow, that's such a that's such a great question. Um, years ago, Chris, that is a really great question, and it and it causes me to have a lump in my throat, or causes me rather to do that. Um, a long time ago, I was actually asked, you know, what did I want on my tomb, a tombstone, uh, which which is like a big question, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and I've always remembered my answer to the question, and the answer to the question was, uh, you know, Paul was here. And he made a difference whilst he was. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it's it's, it's really, um, you know, impacting uh, people, and as a result of impacting people, hopefully impacting communities, and hopefully impacting our world as well. Yeah, that's beautiful, Paul. And um, next part of that was, did you get it? And I can probably say that at this stage, yes, you certainly have, and it's oh. still. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but there's, there's there's so much yeah there's so much uh, yeah. so much more to uh, uh, to do you know and that's the great thing about it right is because yeah. you know some people go well you know you should retire but I, yeah, it's so well they no, they don't say that they say isn't it about time you do that and mm -hmm. I, I don't see how you could do that if you're curious and if you're wanting to make a difference and if you love doing it so yeah the curiosity thing uh, gets me as well yeah fantastic. Paul, way back in 1999, you introduced me to a book by Stephen Covey titled yeah. The Seven Habits of Highly yeah. Effective People. Yeah. And that's had a profound effect on my life, particularly with point two, beginning with the end in mind. Yeah. Now, when people are starting a business, why is it critical that the mission, values or vision be clearly defined and articulated right from the outset? Well, Chris, let me answer that this way. Um, you know, the, the, the pandemic uh, that we've just been through or are going through, whichever way you look at it, um, I, there's, there's lots of bad things about that, but there's also lots of blessings and lots of great things that have, that have happened as a result of it. And I, I, I say that not to minimize the, 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 the bad things, but 
the, one of the great things is that it has accelerated the kind of thinking that we, you know, you and I have been talking about for years. And one of the things we saw through the, the pandemic is that um, those people who had a very clear idea of why they were here and a very, what, what Stephen Covey, who you mentioned right there, would talk about as a North Star, right? That North Star, mm. they were the people who came through this very clearly or very, very much better. And, and the reason is that they were now a phrase that I'm using quite a lot. They were impact driven. They were purpose focused, if you will. Mm. And, and yep. that's something that they were focused on. And here's the key to it. that something they were focused on was bigger than themselves. And so that whole mission, vision, purpose thing is absolutely critical. It's that thing that you fall back on and frequently, you know, well, what decision are we going to make right here? Well, the answer to that mm. question revolves on why you're here. That's and once you're clear mm. on that, then the mm. answer becomes very clear. Mm. That's a fantastic um, uh, point because I think if people get stuck in doing something with procrastination and putting it off, as you mentioned, by revisiting why you're in in the game for the first, you know, in the first place, it helps you refocus and reposition your uh, your thinking. Oh, exactly, exactly. And and if it's bigger than you, right? It, it's it's there. It's there the whole time, right? You just, you know, and it comes back to what I was saying before about being impact driven and making a difference and all of those kind of things. And so, we've got to understand. And I think one of the one of the, if I could just add this in, Chris, I think that one of the things we've learned. Uh, and we, we first started to learn it around 2008. You may remember in 2008 with the global financial crisis, you know, pre the global financial crisis, there was, you know, go see the, the Wolf of Wall Street movie as a, for example, right, if it's still around, you know, and that was in the days when we were saying greed is good, greed is good, greed is good. It's all yeah. about us, all about us, right? And, and what did we discover in 2008? 2008 we discovered, hang on a second, that doesn't work. <laughs> it seems like that doesn't work too much. Too well. And so now I think that one of the major things that we've seen through the pandemic is to understand that we are all connected. I mean, there's not, you, you can't doubt it anymore, right? We are all connected. And so, therefore, one of the things that I see with great businesses now is that it's no longer about me, it's about we, right? And, and if we can really get that, if we can understand that, yes, value that we give is really important, but values, that is to say, the things that we stand for, are now, which again, it gets back to your earlier question, are really the key things. And when we can bring that into the workforce or into the company so that, you know, we, we, we're really on purpose ourselves, that our team is inspired, we become a magnet for talent, we become hopefully a place where people love to deal with and a place where people rave about when, they, when we are dealing with them. And that's the yeah. way to build a fascinating business. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. So if you were starting a business from scratch, Paul, what three tips would you take on board now with the experience and the knowledge of the things that you've learned over the years? Mm, okay. Well, I, I think I've mentioned, mentioned a couple of them <laughs> already. Uh, and I just wish I got this earlier, right? I mean, you know, you know what happens, right? When you're doing it, you just kind of do it. And then later on, you go yeah. back and you look at it and go, oh my gosh, that, I didn't realize it. That's what I was doing, right? Right back then. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and I can remember, you know, books like, you know, way back in 1983, you know, we read books with Tom Peters, like In Search of Excellence and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, you just, you just kind of knew you were doing it, but no one gave it a label. So to the short answer to your question, uh, Chris, is this, I think that the thing that I would now do whenever I was starting, if I was starting, well, a business way back. I would, have, I would have thought much more about the impact that I wanted to create mm -hmm. rather than the revenue that I wanted to have. Does that make sense? And I think in mm -hmm. some ways I always was doing that, but now I've got a label, right? And the label is, as I've said, impact-driven. So that'd be the first thing. Um, the second thing, again, you know, I've been speaking about it for a long time, and that is to understand that it really is about the small stuff. You know, it's really about the small thing. It's about, you know, if you're starting, if you're starting a retail business, you might start to think about, you know, how are we going to stock the shelves and all that kind of stuff. But it's much more important to think about how you welcome that customer. What's, what's the first thing you can say? 
And similarly, you know, when if we're not starting a retail business, but we're starting, you know, some business where people are calling us on, you know, how are we going to show up? How are we, mm-hmm. how are we dealing with people? What are we going to say in emails? You know, all of those little tiny, tiny, tiny things. As, as, as a, for example, you know, suppose you're starting a cafe. Well, you, you could be like every other cafe, most, most cafes anyway. And you could have uh, like, a, you know, where the, where the waitress, the server has, uh, you know, the, the, the form that they take your order on. And it could say on there number of packs, P-A-X, right? It could say that. Or it could say number of guests. And just by changing that simple thing, all of a sudden, that person who's the front person for you is not thinking, oh, it's a PAX, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a guess. The reason I'm, I'm hot on that one is I went to this lovely hotel, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, over the weekend. And there I am in the restaurant. They had the, you know, they, because of COVID, they had sort of like the electronic menu, right, in front of you, right? You know, you had to you scan the QR code. Mm-hmm. And the first question it asked was number of packs. I go, hang on a second. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a packs. <laughs> Do you see what oh, I mean? Okay. So, so yeah. it's just thinking those and really understanding that it's those little things that really drive the bigger things. And so always... Yeah get that right if you're shipping things to customers what's the opening the box experience look like you yeah. know all of that kind of stuff just tiny 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 things yeah or for that matter you know uh, how do we how do we show up on on zoom you know what's the background look like uh, you know i had someone the other day sadly it was in a team that i'm sort of responsible for and uh, they were working at home and so they had like a basketball shirt on right and a basketball shirt's okay if uh, you know we're all going to the gym, but there's no way that it's okay if we're having a meeting in the team. Do you see what you know what I'm saying? And they've got yeah, to get right. these these little things right, and it's the little things that actually produce the the big results. So that's the second yeah. thing, right? Took a long time to talk mm-hmm. about that, but the little thing, uh, the little things, and then the third thing I think is that a business is not all plain sailing. We wish that it was all exponential. Uh, but it's yeah. not, you know, it's got these interesting ripples. And hopefully, if, if I were to think back, and I think I've been pretty good at it, but I'd love to be, I think, better about it and to understand that the reason you did this, yes, there was a big reason that you did it, the why, if you will, that you did it. And we talked a little yeah. bit about that. But also, it's to bring joy. It's to bring yeah. joy. It's to bring joy to you. It's to bring joy to your family. It's to bring joy to your team. It's to bring, you know, that sort of thing. And so the moment yeah. that's not happening, you just yeah. got to realize, whoa, hang on a second. We got, we got a problem yeah. here, right? Uh, because the moment that happens, you, you go into this spiral, right? Because you're just not in a good place. And so you yeah, just right. got to realize that joy has got to be at the center of it in some way. Yeah. And it also enhances the culture of the business if you really care and show you really care oh, for your totally. team as well. Totally, Amazing. totally so. Yeah, totally so. Yeah. Absolutely right. That's why you're good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still learning, Paul. <laughs> As we all do. Paul, how did B1G1 come about? Oh, well, I mentioned earlier moments, you know, and, and all of us have these moments, right? And uh, there was this moment when Masami, who came up with the idea, essentially, uh, she, she said to me, uh, she asked me to, I was mentoring her and she asked me to imagine a world. This was way back in 2007. She said, I want you to imagine a world. And I was an, an Aussie bloke at the time, right? So she said, I want you to imagine a world. So yeah, okay, I'll imagine a world. And here is she, this, this beautiful, softly spoken Japanese lady. So just imagine that sort of change between, you know, Aussie bloke and nicely, softly spoken Japanese lady. Well, so I've got goosebumps. <laughs> and she and she says to me uh can you just imagine something and i said sure what, what what do you want me to imagine and she said well i want you to imagine a world where every time business is done something great happens in the world now bear in mind she's talking with an aussie bloke right at this point so i go aussie bloke reaction oh yeah that'd be good that'd be good and, she, and she's smart enough to say, I don't think you got what I meant. <laughs> so, so I said, oh, okay, well, explain it to me. 
And she said, well, uh, in my head, I've been thinking about this for a while now. And it, that was obvious that she had. And she said, I've given it a name. Now, the name is now B1G1, right? But at that time, she said, the name is buy one, give one. And I said, okay, well, how would that work? She said, well, in literal words, we should get Harvey Norman to sponsor this. She said, I want you to imagine you go down to Harvey Norman and you, and you buy a plasma TV. And I said, well, hang on a second, hang on a second. Did, what did you say the name was? Buy one, give one. So if I go down to Harvey Norman and buy a plasma TV, they're not going to give me another TV, right? And she said, no, 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 you misunderstand. And I said, well, okay, explain it to me. So well, you go down there because you want either a bigger vision, right, for your TV, or you want better, clearer vision. That's why you're buying the TV. I go, yeah, that's right. She said, well, Imagine this, how would it be if when you did that, big long pause, someone who could not see, is when someone, when you did that, what if, when someone who could not see got the gift of sight? Oh, Aussie bloke goes out the window mm. and goosebumps come all over me. Oh, my oh yeah. God. And then, you know, I'm drinking, a, a, I, I had a, a cup of coffee, right? and she says, or imagine, you know, every time someone sells or buys a cup of coffee, imagine if a child in need were, were to get life-changing water just as a result of that. And I'm surrounded, like, as of now, by books. And she said, or, you know, imagine, you know, someone buys a book and imagine what it would be like if every time that happened, a tree got planted. And I remember my reaction to that. My reaction was very clear. I said, Masami, can I be your mentor for the rest of your life? That, that's how big that mm -hmm. idea is. And fortunately, eventually, she didn't say yes straight away, but eventually she did. <laughs> and, uh, and now... Yeah. <laughs> And now that translates into, I mean, Chris, you know, you and I are on Zoom right now and we're, we're doing this and automatically, uh, and I'm one of the many people who do this, it's not, you know, oh, like, Paul, you're great, right? But automatically, every time I'm on Zoom, 11 kids get access, 11 kids in need get access to literally game-changing education just because you and I are on Zoom. Or, you know, I, I, I can, as you know, I send an email and the child gets or somebody gets access to life-saving water. Or, you know, and you can think of so many things that we do in our business. These, I call them triggers, which now you can link to making a massive impact. Remember I talked about the power of small before? Tiny, mm, yeah. very tiny, but collectively yeah. massive. And so as you and I are speaking today, uh, B1G1 is up to, who could have thought this, right? This is where the moment is like amazing, right? Uh, 229 million uh, giving mm. impacts uh, with, uh, you know, 3,000 plus and growing an incredible right now, um, uh, business members um, around the world. So I think all of us have those, moments and the trick is yeah. to kind of go whoa you know just yeah. sort of recognize them and then don't think of you think of you know what remember yeah. we talked about the impact that they can make and then you know go from there and so yeah that's the the classic you know i was just fortunate enough to be on the receiving end of that so yeah really really classic sort of example of it and it ties in nicely with that vision that we spoke about what an incredible vision to have and to see where it's currently positioned in the world with its impact, it's just amazing. Oh, exactly right. Exactly right. And that's what you, you know, you just got to keep getting back to that, you know, when you go, hang on, why the heck are we here? Well, this is why we're here, you know, <laughs> all of these uh, sorts of things. Yeah, very, very true, Chris, very true. Well, one of the um, benefits, I suppose, of charitable giving is that it can be a fantastic, I suppose, marketing strategy can you um share what benefits you've seen businesses gain as a result of being a member of b1g1 for example yeah it's very interesting if, if, if you said that the only time uh, masami she remember i mentioned she's uh, you know softly spoken japanese person and all of that kind of stuff the only time she ever yelled at me and and actually 
slam the phone down on me. <laughs> it's the only time in uh, whatever it is, you know, 14 years was when I said, oh my God, this is the best marketing strategy. And she, and she said, she literally said, she literally said, this is not a marketing strategy, right? She hang, on, said hang, that. hang on, Paul. Paul, hang on, hang on. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, no, 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 no. No. So what, what, she, what she means by that is that that you know you should never promise things that you you, you can't sort of guarantee and and yeah. I, I would say this here's how i would explain it if you were to if you were to talk to me about you know two crucial words in in marketing i would say that the two crucial words are belonging that is you you well maybe let me put them in a different order i think the the, the you know when, whenever and Chris, you know this because you write great blogs, you know, and all of this kind of stuff. And a lot of people think that, you know, you're writing the blogs to, you know, get to sell something or whatever. But, but what if everything you do in business is simply designed to do one thing, and that is to connect, right? To connect. And then to realize that people want to belong to something great. So if you, if, if you understand then that, and, and that's not sort of break it into marketing and selling, but that growing a great business is all about connection and it's all about belonging. Now, what B1G1 does is it actually connects you, right? It connects to you. It's not some sort of external thing. It connects to you. And as a result of you connecting with that, imagine how you'd feel every time, well, you know, because you do it, right? But every time you send an email, something great happens, right? Imagine that. And, and you might just pause for a minute and think about that if you're listening to this, right? And so it connects to you because it becomes who you are. And then it connects to your family. It connects to your team. Then through there, it connects to your prospective customers. That's if you like the marketing side of things, you know? And then it connects to your existing customers. Um, then it connects to your communities, uh, your community, and then it connects to our world. So if we can think about it that way, that in fact, because the, the, someone someone said the the other day, they said, you know, we were talking about well, what 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 what's been the your experience of B1G1, and you know, I thought they would say, oh, you know. Well, we can give from one cent, 100% of the giving goes. That's what I thought they would say. I thought they would say that. Um, you know, and then all these wonderful projects that we can now connect with. Um, but that's not what they said. What, what they said was, excuse me, what, what they said was that this has, has changed our business totally, right? It's, it's like it's impacted it in ways that we could never imagine. And, and so I'm going, really? <laughs> and I said, so what's the reason for that? And they said, well, it shifts the spirit. It shifts the spirit, right? And so, so is, is, is shifting the spirit uh, a marketing strategy? I don't think so, but the impact of shifting the spirit becomes something really great, you know? That's a fantastic point to finish on there, Paul. And um, is there any final thoughts on purpose, Paul, that uh, you might be able to share with the people that are viewing today? Uh, yeah, I think that, um, you know, per there's so many thoughts around purpose, right? So, um, and Chris, it goes back. I mean, by the way, thank you for your questions, right? Because your, your, your questions help bring out some great things. And so thank you for that. And, and that, you know, all those questions you asked, you know, about the, the book and the vision, all that kind of stuff, they're getting back to that same point, right? That when we're clearly, you know, and you know, you, you, you had me talking about what I wanted to put on my, on my tombstone, right? And so so it, it's that, it's that, it's that, it's that bigger than you thing. It's that thing that I think about it as a magnet. It's that sort of thing that gives you where, you know, where, where, when, you, when you have a very strong purpose and, and, uh, and, and, and people uh, ask you what that is, what you want them to do is you want to say, oh my God, I so want to be a part of that. I so want to be a part of that. 
and and that's you know so the the whole purpose thing that's why i said you know you remember you mentioned those three things that uh we need to have it's it's exactly that you know define the impact which is another way of saying you know define the purpose get the purpose right and and understand too that as you as you build right, right that that thing can shift it really can shift right uh, uh, uh once be because you shift right you understand more things right but it will always have that sort of fundamental uh bigger than you picture really well so yeah it's cru crucial absolutely crucial without it you know without it, yeah. it it's just like uh you know candle in the wind stuff right uh but with it it's like rock absolute rock yeah. Mr. Paul Dunn, it's been very insightful and as always very stimulating to hear and uh, your thoughts and to chat with you. And um, it's been a real privilege whenever I get the chance to share my time with you after 22 years after we first met. So <laughs> once again, it's just amazing that um, we've got this opportunity to be able to tap into your thoughts and just hear your words of wisdom. So I'm truly grateful and thankful, Paul. Well, Chris, as I mentioned, thank you. I'm, I'm really uh, honoured to be here and, and to also understand yet again that, it, that it's questions, that the questions that we ask that actually move us forward, right? And so I want to thank you for, A, providing this space, and secondly, for asking such great questions that I hope that my answers kind of, you know, moved uh, some of those who were listening to some new understandings of, of business in 2021 and beyond.